What's up everybody, Derek here, and today I was gonna go over my top five baits that I use whenever I'm trying to fish in the wind or you know, out there on the main lake or out there in the open and I'm trying to catch fish effectively because fishing in the wind can get really discouraging and can get really hard to fish sometimes, especially if you're trying to pick up those finicky fish or if it's cold and it's windy, that can be one of the worst conditions because it's cold, those fish are slow, so you definitely have to start using more moving baits whenever that wind is really kicked up. But it can really get things going in the right direction because they can also get really aggressive if the right conditions are in place for those minnows to get kicked up, the crawfish to get going around. That food chain really starts moving around when there's a lot of that current from the wind going in. Really what I would like to go to, whether it's being out on the main lake and trying to fish up shallow and pulling out, I go with the square build trying to dig that thing down into the bottom and just hit all those rocks and be erratic and try to pick up those reaction strikes from fish that may be up shallow or, or those bait fish that may be up shallow or I may switch it over and go a little bit deeper depending upon the season and try to get this down in there and do the same thing off of main lake points or brush piles or anything, trying to get around those zones where those fish may be hanging around. So crankbait is my first go-to whenever it, wind really gets kicked up and that vibration from these crankbaits can really get the fish to hone in on these things. So definitely give a crankbait a try. You know, just like with that crankbait, I have two of the same lure just in different sizes to kind of fit the, the situation that I need. And I need to provide a little bit more flash, I go with the spinnerbait. Um, sometimes that digging into the bottom and other stuff can actually spook fish sometimes. And that vibration can really help hone them in, but you gotta fi figure it out as you're fishing along. And maybe a little bit of that flash, maybe there's a little bit of stain to that water and, and maybe a little grass up shallow. There may be different conditions and spinnerbait can fill those really good for you. Especially if there's a little more wood up shallow or you're pulling off of a deep ledge and you want a little bit more fall, you might go with like a 3 8 up to a half ounce and just kind of work down a point or in some deeper water. And a lot of times, if you get that fluttering action, I know on rivers and other parts where the, the bends of the river channel come into a lake, you can put these in the timber and let the flutter, and a lot of times those fish will pick up on it whenever that fluttering action is going on. But bumping these off of logs and other stuff, this is my finesse spinnerbait lure, so I throw this up shallow, real shallow, especially around sitting timber and other stuff if I'm trying to get those bait fish to react and get those fish to react by bumping little logs and stuff that's up real shallow without having to really raise my rod tip. But if I wanted a little bit deeper, let's say five feet or or deeper, I'll go with this 3 8 ounce. And this thing is beat up. I've caught so many fish on this thing through the years, but um, spinnerbait is definitely another one to go to. Sometimes you can't always fish your favorite lure, but this lure right here, the chatterbait, kind of fits into every category of all variables of fishing for me because you can put a swim bait on the back end of it. It vibrates like a crankbait. It can work really well in grass. It, you can even fish it deep. I mean, you can yo-yo it. There's so many different ways of fishing this versatile lure and it almost fishes in every season in every kind of variable that you can throw at it in fishing. So. A chatterbait is definitely one that you've got to try, whether you have a trailer on or not. If you have that trailer, you can fish a little bit deeper because it adds that bulk and that weight to it. But if you're going to fish shallow, just like that finesse spinnerbait, you can hold your rod tip high and throw this thing up real shallow. And especially if there's a little layer of grass up there and it's just ticking across the top, this will be better than a spinnerbait in getting through that grass. So this is a good go-to lure. So definitely try out the chatterbait. All right, this fourth lure is pretty easy for me because this is a soft plastic paddle tail swim bait. Any style that's about four to five to six inches long, uh, whether it's with a swim bait type of a hook or whether it's just a four aught or three aught hook with a, a bullet sinker above it, it doesn't really matter as long as you can get it to the effective zone that you want to be fishing. And really, if there's grass also in the equation for this one with the wind, this one can kill them. Because if you can get it down to that grass and rip that thing free, especially when that wind and those fish are aggressive, a reaction strike is going to get you yeah, lots of fish with one of these. So you definitely want to give these a try and rig it up however you want. But I prefer 
a four out hook on one of these, a wide gap with a bullet sinker up above it that is about three eighths because it's very versatile. So if you decide that you want to try a Texas rig or anything like that, you just take this off and put on a worm or any other kind of plastic and all of a sudden you're fishing off the bottom. But definitely give one of these a try. All right, this last way of fishing in the wind is probably one of my favorite, but it's one of the slowest even though it's windy out there and you're trying to get a moving bait. And that's with the Carolina rig. I've got this one rigged up to where it's about two and a half to three foot up above, but basically you got your bullet sinker and then you've got some beads. I like to usually use two and then you got a swivel and then you got your, your leader that you're tying on. And then I go with a four rot wide gap hook, just like with uh, I do with my swim baits. So I usually use these because they're, they're pretty much about the size that you usually need is a four rot. So I've got a bigger style worm here. This is a ribbon tail worm and a lot of times those bigger fish will be hanging on drop offs and other stuff off the main lake and when that wind really gets to going those bait fish will get positioned in a perfect spot right off of that point. And if you're dragging this on the back side or where it kind of eddies up and those fish are really aggressive off the back side even if it's a smaller worm but I like the ribbon tail that's the the idea here because you're getting that that little bit of movement out of the back side of that tail it's not just just a stick bait you're getting some some movement so that's what I like to use whenever I'm using a Carolina rig whenever it's windy out but definitely give all these ways a try because if you try out these ways and you're not catching them they may not just be biting that day because if it's really windy and it's getting up to 20 miles an hour or more, 15 miles an hour, it can really push you around depending upon what kind of boat you're in or where you're positioned at on the lake. If it's a straight gale force down the lake and it's 20 miles an hour, it's going to be some tough fishing and you're going to have to learn to the ways to set up your bait caster or, or, or your spinning reel or however you're throwing that bait and focus on throwing downwind because that's what you're really going to have to focus on whenever you're throwing these lures because it's going to be tough to throw into a dead wind that's coming right at you but let me know what you guys think or what kind of baits you guys would use whenever it's windy out there i'd love to hear from you guys and subscribe if you haven't already like this video if you liked it and i'll see you guys in the next one